Ryland, we're thrilled to have you with us today. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in to this Concerts and Conversations, um, Connor Tenor Ryland Angel did a recording several years ago with Ars Lyrica called Heart and Soul, um, playing on the use of the words Herz und Seele, heart and soul in German, in 17th century devotional music um, from a variety of German composers. This music is particularly appropriate for uh, the Passover season and for Holy Week, so that explains why we're doing um, a few excerpts and some conversation about it now. Um, the entire album is available from Centaur Records, um, and a good deal of it um, is available for free, and individual clips on YouTube will be using those today in our conversation. So Ryland, hi. Hello, greetings from New York City. It's great to see you. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's great to see you too. A friendly face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. As we were dreaming yeah. this up, um, it occurred to me uh, that the story of how we put this recording together in the first place was interesting because I remember going back and forth with you several times about repertoire. Um, fortunately, there's a, a, an abundance of riches um, for the countertenor voice, for the alto voice um, within 17th century devotional German music. Um, we had to kind of severely limit ourselves just to those pieces that you really wanted to do and that I was committed to as well. Um, I was wondering if you wanted to say something about the eventual choices that we made and particularly the pieces that we're going to share today, um, like the J.C. Bach um, or the Bernhardt. Yeah, um, well, first off, um, I wanted to record um, this music and so the question was who should I record it with and um, I have always been a fan <laughs> of you Mr. Durst, uh, you're amazingly talented and, um, and you really listen and you're also really humble, so you're really talented and really humble. So it's very good, it's always you know, it's good to, to learn from people like you and and it's, uh, yeah, it's fab. So I was really excited when you said you'd be part of this and that you'd, you'd do this. And when you mentioned it and um, using the organ in your church and uh, doing, and, you know, going through the different pieces, um, I was just thrilled. So thank you so much, first off. Uh, uh, let me introduce you to the gear. So it's a very small setup, but thankfully it's pretty good gear. So here we have blue the microphone right along with the blue cable can you see the blue cable <clears throat> yes that's blue right so that's basically the main that's the mic of choice at the moment and uh then i record that goes through this which is the apogee duet which is actually a great company and it's uh like a preamp um uh, which then feeds into the computer and i'm currently recording in logic pro uh, so this duet, Apogee is known for having, producing in this preamp sound, not an overly coloured sound, it's quite a clear, realistic, real sound. Um, and when I'm recording, I use these headphones, the DT, yeah, DT770s, um, by, I think they're by Bayer Dynamic, I'm not, I can't remember, but they're very good. And then I've got old keyboard here. <laughs> Hello in the corner. So, you know, to get my notes. And then if I get bored, I can play Bonnie Raitt songs like this. <laughs> yeah, and things like that. So, um, <laughs> it's just a laugh a minute around here. Uh, so, yeah, and that's it's all these churches and different places are putting it. In, uh, I think it may be a museum or two are going to do it too. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's really cool. So actually, it gives me a bit of purpose, and if it helps other people with prayer meditation and uh, just a little bit of calm during the day, then I'm, I'm jolly happy, because I think that's certainly something that we all need at the moment, so. Absolutely, yep. You know, so that's, uh, that's cool. Matthew's hair. You have such good hair, always. It's really it's long <laughs> right now. <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm wearing a hat. I'm like, I look just, I look like a wreck. Look at that. Luckily, yeah. Sixto has a pair of clippers and the necessary scissors, so at some point this week, I'm getting a haircut. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> well, I think it looks great. If I can borrow some, that'd be even better, you know. I would happily give it away, because <laughs> I've got rather too much. <laughs> it's conductor hair. You have to have that. It's part of the CV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Toss it around. <clears throat> exactly. Um, I, I'm 
struck coming back to this recording the presence of penitential things on this disc. Um, we start with Ach, dass ich was es genug hatte, um, this uh, work by Johann Christoph Bach, um, which combines uh, verses from the Lamentations of Jeremiah with Psalm 38, um, the translation of which reads just very briefly, if I can help, if my head would hold enough water to allow tears to flow down from my eyes like streams, then I would lament my sins day and night. That's quite a thing to say um, <clears throat> at the opening of this piece. Um, and it's one of the reasons why this composer responds in such a creative and dark way with this amazing texture. Um, I think for both of us, that was one of the things that attracted us to the piece. It's not only the beauty of the melody um, and the way you deliver it, um, but the, the dense five-part scoring um, that creates these astonishing harmonies underneath you. Um, it's really a luscious piece. Yeah, and it's, it, that's actually, um an example of where, you know, because it, it's a quite a slow tempo, so it has to be like this. And the way that we approached it, well, you know, and uh, I think we succeeded, um, you know, keeping that energy moving forward. Because, you know, it comes back again, so it's like, an, you know, an ABA. Um, uh, and just having, you know, going back to and just keeping that energy moving, you know, from note to note, etc. cetera. And I, that's, uh, yeah, that's really important with that piece. I, what was another great thing which comes to mind is um, I really enjoyed recording it where we recorded it. So, you know, recording it in the, uh, the organ loft at, at the church was just great, you know, because I could just look out into the space and I just remember looking out and seeing this blue wall. Now, I'm not colorblind, am I? It's blue, right? No, it's blue, yes. <laughs> yeah, got it. Because right, the other day I was worrying. I said, oh, that's green. And so we said, no, blue. Well, it, it's blue and green in, in various bits. It's a mosaic. We're speaking of, of St. Philip Presbyterian Church um, here in Houston, where our Zerica offices and rehearses and where I've been the organist for many years. Um, there's a fantastic organ there uh, by Paul Fritz, um, a big sort of North German style instrument that uh, works really well for this music um, as a continuo instrument. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it was the logical place for us to do this recording. Yeah, it's, um, yeah. So just looking at that, the big blue, it was just great. It was, you know, it gave so much space and it helped, you know, mm -hmm. with those long lines uh, as well. Just, you know, really feeling it and singing out into that space and having that view. I mean, just looking at that blue was fantastic. And uh, yeah. by the way, and your organ playing on the CD is superb. Oh, thank you. It's really good. I listen to that all the time. You know, that voice, pff, nah, you know, <laughs> shut that to one side. <laughs> and it, the instruments came out really well too. Yeah, I think I so mean, too. you know, all those, Gambas in one room. <laughs> it's a great space to make music. I'm very lucky um, to be there on a weekly basis. Yeah, it's fantastic. Now, shall we have a listen to the piece? I'd love to, yeah. Cool.
So Ryland, this second piece that we're going to excerpt today, um, in Was betrübst du dich of Christoph Bernhard, um, we have a piece setting some familiar words from Psalm 42. Um, a question, why are you troubled, my soul, and why are you so agitated, receives an answer, Hara of God, trust in God, I shall yet give thanks, for he is my savior and my God. This comes from a composer who was himself um, not only a gifted uh, writer of music, but also a great singer. He was an alto. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yes. Um, and someone who apparently um, <clears throat> made a great career of singing some of his own pieces. Um, does the knowledge that this composer actually sang his own music affect you at all as you sing a piece like this? Do you know, that is the first time I've heard that. Yeah. I, so I don't know. So, I mean, that's amazing. So, oh, okay. I mean, so I didn't know we did. Yeah. Um, I, I, what strikes me about the piece, which I really love, is the beginning. It's got that opening statement. You know, there's a big mm -hmm. question. And then it moves. I don't know if that's the right key, but um, that's, I really like the sort of, you know, the play with the movement with this, mm -hmm. you know, but having that, those opening sort of, you know, questions and things and then moving it on. For those who like Schutz, uh, this comes from a close colleague of Schutz, um, <clears throat> someone who was active in Dresden in the 17th century, and it's very much in the kind of Schutz miniaturist style, um, that is to say a sacred concerto that relies on just absolutely minimal forces, in this case, just an alto soloist plus uh, continual players. Um, <clears throat> it's a highly expressive um, and a beautiful rendering, really, of this um, lament text. Yeah, yeah. And it's also, I mean, you know, this is a composer that, well, isn't, he's not exactly the most famous composer. No, he's okay. known uh, among music theorists, especially because he wrote a couple of important treatises. Um, without, <laughs> right. no, where outside, is it? I've got it here somewhere. <laughs> but outside academia, I'm afraid yeah. the reputation oh, has failed. No. <laughs> <laughs> On to Philip Erlebach's Trocknet euch ihr heißet sehren. This is perhaps the most evocative text of the three from his 1710 collection um, called uh, harmonische Freude, musikalische Freunde, which means literally harmonic joys for musical friends, um, which is a very sweet title. Um, sounds better in German, of course, than it does in English, which is why we usually <laughs> render it that way. Um, the text itself uh, is, is quite evocative. It begins with the line, be still, my hot ears, eyes regain your sight. Um, we begin to understand really um, the direction of the text by the third stanza or so, because that opening sentence is followed by this. Speaking directly, sighs, what still troubles you? For heaven does indeed love me, and to it I've entrusted myself. It keeps watch so that in darkest night my heart may have courage. I can't think of anything on this recording that speaks quite so clearly to both our current situation um, and the religious festivals that happen this week, Passover um, and Holy Week.
Yeah. Ireland, any thoughts on the <clears throat> on the Earl of Bach? Yeah, um, I suppose this this piece is uh, along with the JC Bach uh, was what sort of got me thinking a lot about um, this, this this repertoire. And uh, I have to say that one of my countertenor colleagues, I did listen to his recording of it quite a lot, Mr. Andrea Scholl. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it's, you know, one of the best things he's ever recorded. Well, you know, um, and uh, it, it was really quite inspiring. Um, and uh, again, you know, um, in this piece, you know, keeping the forward momentum going and you know, keep, keeping the verses varied and following the text and text painting. Um, it was, that was a real joy to do. And it's a complicated thing to do in a strophic piece. This piece is basically um, one melody um, set above a bass line that repeats three times. It's a basso ostinato bass line. Um, and we have basically the same tune, it's multiple verses. This piece presents an interesting challenge for the singer, especially, who has to repeat the same music three times, but with different words each time. Um, what kind of mindset do you have to bring to a piece like this in order to deliver the texts uh, effectively, rather? Well, sort of, uh, you know, look at the words a lot, you know, sort of absorb the translation and um, sing the text, you know, tell the story. Um, and when in doubt, I generally put a couple of key words on the top of each, you know, uh, uh, verse. So I sort of get the general idea, you know, in my head and then, you know, just sing the text, you know. And normally if I'm just thinking about the text and about those key sort of words, then, you know, things will come out differently. The tune will come out differently. And of course, the words are different, so they'll be sung in a different, you know, different fashion. One last thought before we listen to this piece. Um, it comes from a collection um, <clears throat> that makes much in the preface of uh, its contents, which it calls, and I quote, moral and political arias. <laughs> I'll just put that out there as you listen to the text, uh, as you listen to the piece and contemplate its text. What's moral and what's political about this? <laughs>
the joy of making music like this is bringing together a talent and then letting them go. And <clears throat> being a part of that process is great fun. Yeah. And that's and very satisfying. I, yeah. And I think, you know, that was really nice, you know, with when we did this in concert, when we recorded it, you know, having that freedom um, is really good because it allows you to explore different possibilities musically um, mm -hmm. and just, you know, sort of letting it hang out basically and let it let the energy flow rather than being stilted and that's one of the great things that you know why i love working with matthew so much and with ars lyrica is that because you know you know in rehearsal you know matthew will guide but he'll also give a lot of space for artists to interpret and, you know and if he needs to sort of you know play around with that a bit he will but the way he does it and Matthew, the way you do it is, you know, it's just really, really nice. And, uh, uh, and really just, just helps for a really creative atmosphere. So I totally look forward to every time I come down to work um, with Ars Lyrica. I should, but, I've, I've learned those behaviors from all of my colleagues who inspire me. <laughs> <laughs> like you. <laughs> yeah, so around these beautiful vocal works um, from our album Heart and Soul, um, there are a number of instrumental pieces. Um, we've decided to include for this uh, particular segment um, a few movements from a suite by Dietrich Becker, published in 1668 in a publication called Musikalisches Frühlingsfrüchte, which means musical spring fruit. Excellent. <laughs> which I hope everybody is eating in great abundance right now, um, <laughs> healthy at home. <clears throat> yeah. He was a longtime Hamburg resident, um, a gifted violinist, and he popularized among the Germans um, the chamber sonata and the dance suite. So from one of those dance suites, um, here's both an aria and a saraband.
the ensemble consists of two violins, two violas da gamba, a violone, which is basically a, a, a bass string instrument um, of the 17th century. And that's got loads of strings. Yep. Dorbo, <laughs> uh, harpsichord on some pieces and organ on others. Why is that the arrangement for this music? Obviously, well, we know, not obviously, but uh, French orchestras would double up on violas, right? You'd have a bigger viola section. Why right. is the, the lower part of this is so heavy? Well, in fact, that French model was important in the 17th century for a lot of German composers. Uh, they took the model of Lully, um, that uh, fairly thick French sound, um, featuring a, one dominant violin line on top, um, usually joined by oboes, multiple what we might call viola parts in the middle, usually at least three, um, and then another part on the bottom, the bass line. Um, so it's a stratified texture featuring um, or putting emphasis on the top and bottom and a lot of filler that make the textures rather busy and complicated. The Germans took this idea um, and adapted it to their own circumstances. The viola da gamba was much more popular in the 17th century than it was in the 18th century, particularly among the Germans. Um, and so many of these pieces feature a couple of viola da gamba parts in the middle of a five-part texture. Is that also true in the vocal works from the same time period? Uh, yes, uh, the J.C. Bach um, <clears throat> has the, that five-part texture going on. Yeah. Did you know that, Ryland? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Ryland, tell us a little bit about what is life like in New York for you now and what's happened to your schedule as a result of the current circumstances? Well, the situation in New York is what it is. Um, and so I think we're all going to pray a lot and, you know, send good energy to each other and keep in contact. Um, and that's, you know, so important. And so it's wonderful seeing you guys in this call. It's like company. Yay. Yay. Um, I'm in this room pretty much 23 hours a day. I, you know, go out to shop and do some exercise. Um, but I've been sort of developing a routine. So um, I have sort of come up with this thing, which isn't original by the way. So that just, I call it the push-up diet, where I do like a hundred push-ups um, every day, like five times 20. So the idea is you know, when I roll out of bed, before I look out of the window and get too morose, I think, right, push-ups. So I do 20. And that gets the happy, you know, hormones, endorphins flowing around in my brain. And, uh, and sort of, it's good. It actually helps. Um, and then I do it five times during the day. Because, yep. you know, every day I feel like giving up. But I get some, I get uh, nice, nice notes sent me. Um, people who really appreciate it. And that sort of, you know, keeps it going. So I'm not thinking I'm just doing this, you know, this, this you know thing but thankfully people who are getting the uh the chant are only listening to it for like three or four minutes so phew <laughs> you are inspiring a community whose boundaries you'll probably never find out about um so bravo well done thanks matthew well thank you so much for your time today it's so good yeah. to see you <laughs> hey you too and take care of yourself and keep washing your hands <laughs>